If you're considering getting waterfront property here in Cape Coral, whether that's a saltwater property or a freshwater property, two things to take into consideration, your seawall and your dock. Let's talk about both and roll the intro. Hello everyone, it's great to see your smiling faces. My name is Victor Prasad. I'm a real estate broker here in Cape Coral, Florida. I create content showcasing Southwest Florida through video and answer some of the most frequently asked questions on the internet. So if you're considering moving or relocating to or from Southwest Florida, be sure to call, text, or email me. To stay up to date with our local area, be sure to subscribe and click that bell notification so you're kept up to date with the latest content. By the way, if you found one piece of information helpful in this video in any way, be sure to hit that like button, which helps my channel being found through YouTube's algorithm. Let's talk about the size of the dock. Depending on the size of the canal, your dock can be 25% of the canal width with a max of 40 feet. So for example, if you're on a 80 foot canal, then take 25% of that would equal to 20 feet of the dock width, um, the part of the dock that goes into the canal. Now, as far as the width, it could go from property line to property line. Um, going this way <laughs> uh, on your property, the dock, let's say this is your seawall, your dock can come out 25% with a max of 40 feet onto the canal, if that makes sense. There are so many different dock options and arrangements you can have. It really depends on your budget and preference. Here are a few examples of the type of docks available to you. You have docks that just extend off of the seawall that have a sitting area for you to have a view of the canal. You have docks that have a combination of a dock and sitting area and a tiki hut. You even have docks that have spaces for two different sized boats or same size boats and a boat lift with a sitting area and a tiki hut. The variety of options are truly endless. There is an option when installing a seawall that you can have a concrete dock as well. Here's a photo of that. It's pretty inexpensive and it can be done at the same time of the seawall. Now moving on to the seawall, here is the process on what that looks like when you hire a seawall dock company. Depending if you have a vision or just want a seawall installed, then you would get your quotes. Hire the company, sign a contract, place a deposit, the company will apply for a permit, install the seawall, depending if you're on saltwater or freshwater canal, there are different things that occur or things that may pop up. First, freshwater properties are relatively easy for the most part. Depending on the location, there may be coral rock or boulders which require specialized equipment to have it removed. If you're on saltwater canal, there may be mangroves to the rear of the property. If that's the case, a special permit is required to have them removed. Typically, you, do, you would need a DEP report and may also need approval from the Army Corps of Engineers. This is all taken care of within the seawall company. However, there are additional expenses that you may incur. After all that, you make the final payment, then you're good to go. Here's some common questions that I get. Number one is how much? Every lot is different and at the time of this video was made, for an 80 by 125 lot on a freshwater canal, you can guesstimate about $15,000. How long? Pre-COVID, six to eight weeks. Post-COVID, six to eight months. So another common question I get is tree and brush clearing. Most companies that are installing the seawalls do offer to clear the lot. Usually it's a few hundred dollars depending on the amount of trees and brush that you have on your property. And the seawall company does take care of all the trees in the back of the property. The more trees you have or the less trees, relatively, this is built into their price point. Another common question I get is who cuts the grass? The city does it, it's paid through your property taxes. The next most common question I get is wildlife on the property, what happens? Well, I've made a video on this and you could click the info card here to watch that video that goes into a little bit more detail. If there is something I am missing from this video uh, specifically, as always, drop it in the comment section below and I'll be sure to respond to it. Or if need be, if it's a lot of comments or questions about that, I can go ahead and create another video. Hopefully that'll clear up a lot of the questions. All right, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're thinking or even considering moving to Southwest Florida, be sure to call, text, or email me. 
I'd love the opportunity to connect with you. And if you want to know more about working, living, or playing here in Southwest Florida, then if you haven't already, be sure to smash that subscribe button, click that bell notification, so you're kept up to date with the latest content. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, own more real estate.